my name is Thomas Feiler. I'm a partner at PwC in Frankfurt, and I'm leading the real asset sector at PwC, which is mainly uh, currently a real estate business, but also the infrastructure business is growing fast. And uh, yeah, I will just give some overview of some current studies and themes. The general view on real estate and real asset investments is um, because there were some concern, is real estate still, still a good asset class to investment? In? And the clear message is yes. So we had this private market study, which we have done globally for all uh, private private market subsectors, um, where we clearly see that it's a growing growing um, business. Ten percent of global investments are in private market and private markets. Of course, the biggest piece is private equity, but the growth for the next four years up to 2021 will come from real estate, from additional real estate investments uh, in the sector as well as infrastructure. So that's a clear positive view. Um, as we have seen that ESG is um, a, a growing um, issue or subject or a value driver also, and that's the interesting piece. It's seen as a value driver um, in, the, in, the, in the near future. The message that it's focused on net zero, I think it's a good starting point, but net zero is not enough if you talk about ESG, and, but we might also discuss that later on. Um, so our digital outlook, pretty positive enough capital to invest is there. Then going back to our last investor survey in Germany, we have uh, done interview based. The rent development in general was seen still pretty stable in the core locations, but expecting to fall in the, uh, in the secondary location, which is a typical reflex of investments if there's a crisis or something coming up. It's, it's uh, reduced um, risk appetite and a flight into quality which we have seen all the in, the in the interviews. And on the yield side, um, it's, it's all seen correlated to the interest rates. And that's an interesting point as we see some increased inflation <clears throat> for this year, especially in, in Germany. It might be a good discussion also to think about where do we see the interest rates and does it also mean um, that, that, that the yields might, might increase? I personally don't see it as we have this big wave of investment capital which is chasing for yield, but that's something we might discuss. And office use um, in general wasn't seen too skeptical. I will have some, some another slide later on um, to, with a bit more detailed information on office, but seen as stable. Um, currently, I hear from uh, letting agents that it's really hard to get offices let. And on the investment side, I see a bit more cautious than we have seen in our interviews end of last year. Retail, of course, it's critical as it was before, and I think it still is. Bets and chats and logistics are the flavor of the hour still. We see a significant shift into an additional push into bets and chat strategies from pure residential, but also into micro apartments. Um, and other bets and chat strategies. We did a hotel study, um, which we published early this year. Of course, hotel is the most or one of the most critical asset classes and the operators told us that, yes, the lockdown in, in the Q1 2021 and potentially in the second quarter will really stress their liquidity. It's, it's, it's already stressed and we have already seen some, some restructurings on the operator side, but not a big wave in Germany, Germany yet. Um, and the, the outlook is the general theme is that the um, that especially in the in the um, hotels which are linked to trade fairs etc that the rebounds will take two three more years to come back to a pre-crisis level or even below that so the outlook is not as good for leisure it's it's better as we have already seen last year that there was a clear push into this investment sector as all people stayed in their own country more or less or most of them. Um, but also here it's to say that <clears throat> we see the stress on the operator side, but not yet on the on the on the asset side. So banks and lenders are still, let's say, friendly. Um, there's we don't see any any large fire sales, etc. Currently in the market, we did also published an, an office study where we published some some thesis in the last weeks um, in the social media, and it's all about what will be the change in office on one hand, but also what's the impact on, on residential if we stay at home and work more in the home office. So the thesis are in general, thesis one, that people want to stay at home or work at home for two or three days a week. That's something might be more um, stable even, even after, after COVID, that companies will need 20 to 30% less space. 
Um, and the office space, which is still there, is has to be reshaped into more a business club style where people want to meet, uh, but they don't want to work all week on. Um, the other is the, let's say, the flip side on the residential thesis four and five is that, or four to six, I would say, that there is um, on the residential side, we might change the apartment style, the perhaps an additional room for home office work if it's affordable. Um, and people also tend to move further outside of the city center. So it's a discussion about is are the city centers uh, are the right hubs for, for residential investment or is it more and more in the out, outskirts of the cities? Um, and of course, employers have to be flexible on, on, on providing the technical solution, the, the cloud solution, et cetera, to be really be able to work the work to work from home. It uh, was also a study on data center, which uh, was the number one investment class in our emerging trends interview last year, which we see where also infrastructure investors as well as real estate investors look um, at this asset class closer. It was pretty resilient and even pushed by, by COVID as we have seen more, more data need, uh, more cloud solutions to be able to work from home. But we also see we also see in Germany and in the same in Europe that we have still a pretty fragmented market compared to other markets like Asia or North America, where where you have large data center platforms, REITs, etc., that are highly focused on that, and uh, that the level of professionalism, I would say, if that's the right word, um, is far below other um, international countries where there is more focus. But we see that um, that there is an additional focus here, and I think there will also be a kind of a consolidation in the near future for platforms that focus on data center. But it's a special thing because you have to understand um, what's in the data center and do you own it or you don't own it. So it's it's still a market where a bit of education is needed, but there is a lot of capital chasing, especially that asset class, which is more than a niche. I would say it's not like office, but it's um, it's a growing it's a growing asset class, and it's also a discussion about cheap and green energy, which also comes from the ESG discussion. A lot of data center providers move up to to the Nordics, where the, the energy is green and cheaper. And on the last page um, is a bit on numbers uh, taken out of RCA. Um, where, where are we at market? My personal view is from discussion with, with investors, it's the year started pretty slow, slower than expected. And the outlook is a bit more cautious than, than I heard last year. And that's something we see also in the numbers. If you compare the January, February numbers this year with um, last year, we are 50% below of course it could always be some it's only two months it's not an annual figure but it's a two months figure but it shows that that um, investment volume overall is is lower of course there is still as i said it's a differentiation in the asset classes as we see on the right hand side residential was last year the top investment class it feels that this will be the same this year but let's discuss and on the capital, where the capital comes from. Last year, we have seen 60% uh, domestic capital, which was no surprise as we had this travel restrictions and 40% from cross border. Um, and that might also be a theme we discuss, but I feel that there, if travel, if the borders are open again, um, we will also have an increase in, in international capital again in the German market.